Stuart, I have a question, Bob Sink. Yes, Bob. I know that uh, Swami Nityananda has been a huge influence in your life and in your growth. Could you speak about that? He's with me every day, Bob. In every meditation class, I ask for his blessing to give me the strength to do what I do, you know, to teach all these classes and to sustain this spiritual practice in the world. Um, he's been that way, uh, you know, look, as long as I can remember. He's been in my life. He's saved me from very dire situations. He's advised me on how to even sit in front of my own teacher, Rudy. <laughs> I remember, <laughs> well, I told this story, but it's really interesting. Where Rudy told me when I was younger, he said, I want you to go back to college, get a degree, and, um, and I'm going to send you to Big Indian so you can be the teacher up there, and you'll have a way to earn a living. So I said to him, what should I study? I mean, college was probably the last thing I ever wanted to do. And the, the thought of going to college was a very difficult one for me. He said, Stuart, once you graduate, remarkable things are going to start happening. So I said, okay. I registered at one school and I couldn't stand it, so I quit. And then I went to the new school that was more to my aptitude. It's kind of an advanced guard college, but accredited and, uh, you know, a very interesting place. And I got a degree. And finally, what I learned in college was really an important thing. It wasn't that I was going to learn anything there. You know, I mean, everything they taught me, I could have taken books out of the library and read about and learned. What I learned that was really essential for my life was how to complete a cycle, how to finish something, how to graduate, you know, and this, because it was something I never could do. I was always starting projects and leaving them and starting them and leaving them. And being in college taught me how to finish cycles. And I was so grateful to learn that because it became an essential ingredient to my future life after, you know, graduated. Well, anyway, the story is that I went to Rudy and I told him, Rudy, graduating, what kind of miracles are going to take place? And he looked at me and he said, go get a master's degree. I said, what? He said, go get a master's degree. I said, in what? He said, don't give a shit, just go get a master's degree. And then he said to me, not only that, Stuart, I'm taking all your teachings away. I don't want you to teach in the ashram anymore. I mean, in one fell swoop, he just literally floored me. Teaching was the most important thing in my life. I relished it. I loved it. And it was taken away from me. And go get a master's degree. You know, and I had no idea even what I would get a master's degree. <laughs> so I went back to the meditation room and I sat down in front of a big picture of Swami Nityananda. And I started doing a deep inner work. You know, and he came out of the picture. His soul came, he was sitting in front of me. And he said to me, well, what has Rudy just done? He said, first of all, understand if he's taken your teachings away it's the first time in your life you'll be able to grow organically from the ground up he's taken away all your ego need to be a teacher all of that stuff that'll ever keep you from being a teacher and you'll be able to grow from the ground up and i had never heard that before and Nishananda told me this so secondly, to go back to school and spend two years getting a master's degree, Rudy will be responsible for teaching you everything he knows. Because you're listening to your teacher and you're doing what he's asking you to do. 
So I got up after the session with Mitch and, you know, with Baba and Nichinanda. And I went to Rudy. And I walked up to him and I gave him a big hug. And I said, thank you. And he looked at me and he said, my God, I didn't think you would get it this quickly. You know, which was wonderful. But anyway, by the end of the summer, I spent the whole summer, you know, going up to Big Indian, working, growing enormously that summer. And I asked Rudy, I said, do I really have to get on the way back from Big Indian? I asked him, do I really have to get a master's degree? And he looked at me with a big smile on his face and said, no, you passed that. I think it was maybe a month later, he sent me to uh, Texas to teach, which was an amazing transition in my life. And it began to put responsibility on my shoulders that I never dreamed I would have to have. And finishing the cycle at school taught me how to finish the cycle at Big Indian. When Rudy came down there, he said to me, Stuart, you know, I said to him, Rudy, I think it was six months later, he came down there. I said, Rudy, this is a hell of a three weeks. He told me I was going to go for three weeks. And he looked at me and he says, you're on your fourth day. And I clearly understood how the earth was created in seven days. And I had to have patience and finish the cycle, the completion of whatever my work was in big India. I mean, in, in uh, Texas. And, you know, I've had many experiences with Nichinanda like that. One of the biggest ones was I remember that, uh, um, you know, when Clark Collins came to New York and Muktananda was there, Clark Collins was a very wealthy guy who lived in Dallas, who really had a fondness for Rudy and Rudy's teachings. And, and Carr invited Rudy and, you know, Muktananda and a whole coterie of people to come to uh, Texas where Muktananda would teach. And Rudy, I remember I, I was working in this gallery and I was scraping beams and renovating a gallery for a client of Rudy's who rented a space in one of his buildings. And I looked like a coal miner. I mean, I had soot all over me. My clothes were filthy. And Rudy came down there and he said, you know, Carr is inviting everyone to Big Indian and I want you to come. So I said, Rudy, look at me. He said, no, come, Carr's in my store. I want to introduce you to him. I said, Rudy, look at me. He said, doesn't matter. If he doesn't want you like that, you know, there's something wrong with him. So I went around and he introduced me to Carr Collins and Carr said, yes, you can come. You're an important teacher of Rudy's and I'd love to have you. And I remember in, in Dallas, Muktananda used to give satsangs, you know, literally every day for about an entire week. And we would go and we would sit and chant and do all the Hindu things and get a translator. And every day that I sat with Muktananda, every single day, he asked me, he knew I was very close to Rudy. And I must admit, he was doing a big deal about taking Rudy's ashram apart. All of his students and everything he was taking from, it was really unbelievable what I saw going on. And he said to me, when are you coming to visit me in Ganesh Puri? And I said, Baba, I don't know. And this went on day after day, he asked me that question. I remember I went back to my hotel room and I sat down and I did a very deep meditation. And Swami Nichananda came out of my heart and he was sitting on the bed. His soul force was sitting on the bed in front of me. And I said, Baba, I need to have an answer from Muktananda. And he said to me, you'll go to Ganesh Puri when Rudy tells you to go to Ganesh Puri. And what he was basically telling me is Muktananda is tearing apart the ashram. And you have to tell him that Rudy is your teacher. You are not my teacher, mom. And I went back the next day in satsang and the same question. Every day he asked me the same question. And I said to him, Baba, I will go to Ganesh Puri when Rudy sends me to Ganesh Puri. And then satsang finished and I went out in the hallway of the hotel talking to 
some people there. And one of Muktananda's, you know, disciples came up to me and said, Baba wants to talk to you. So I said, okay. So I went to Muktananda's room. And I'll never forget this, you know, he started talking to a translator and he gave me a beautiful silk orange robe. I mean, gorgeous silk orange robe. And he said, you will be a great teacher someday. And he recognized my devotion to Rudy, who my real teacher is. I couldn't be taken away from my real teacher. I was totally committed. And this is what happened through, you know, through Swami Nichananda. You'll go to Ganesh Puri when Rudy sends you to Ganesh Puri. And, it, you know, people always talk about devotion and this and that and the other. It's a very difficult thing to do. But one has to remember who gave them their life. And I never forgot that the person who gave me my life was Rudy. The person whose work I've been practicing for years is Rudy. And when the time came, when, you know, when all these people were turning their backs on it all, People would come to Rudy, you're not my teacher anymore. Muktananda is my teacher. I can't tell you how many of his students did that. And I saw this going on in front of my eyes. I couldn't believe it. You're not my teacher anymore. Muktananda is my teacher. You know, and that's just bullshit. You could do Muktananda and Rudy and 10 other teachers, and none of them really conflict unless the teachers make it conflict or the people in their heads make it conflict. And I really had a major decision. When are you coming to Ganesh Puri? Muktananda was saying to me, you know, when are you going to come study with me? I said, Baba, I'll go there when Rudy sends me. This is what, Muktananda, this is what Nichananda told me to tell him. It was right on. I got this beautiful orange robe. I got this blessing that I would be a great teacher someday. I mean, really. Not that I needed to be a great teacher, but what a blessing. So Muktananda has been integral to my spiritual practice. Even Rudy told me once, he said, you know, if you didn't look so much like Muktananda when he was a young man, I would have kicked you out of the ashram a long time ago. <laughs> he told me this about a half a dozen times. <laughs> he said, you look like Muktananda looked when he was a young man. He said, the only reason I keep, you know, he said things like that to me to make me work harder on myself. You got to live up to Muktananda or to Nichananda. He said, that's the reason I keep you. You look like Nichananda looked when he was a young man. And he made me work harder. He knew what he was doing, Rudy. He knew how to get me to work harder. He knew I could take being riddled and called a schmuck and this and that. Because why I was there, I wasn't there to have somebody pat on my back and say, you're great. I was there to get my spiritual life. And I would do whatever it took me to do to have my spiritual life. And to this day, you know, Bhagavan Nichananda comes and works with me in every single meditation. I ask for his blessing. I ask for Rudy's blessing and I ask for, you know, Baba Nichananda's blessing. He was an amazing being. And I never met, you know, Swami Nichiran. I think he passed on even before I met Rudy. Rudy met him once. Once. And he changed Rudy's life. Rudy was told by psychics and all kinds of people in New York that if he doesn't go park to do Park Sabood in New Zealand, you know, he, he will die. He was told that he was going to die by psychics in New York. People in the Gurdjieff Society and other places where he used to go. And he went to India on his way to New Zealand. And one of his friends said, you know, there's a very great Swami that lives in Ganeshpuri. 
why don't we go out there and, and see him? And he went. And just being in the presence of Swami Nityananda transformed Rudy. Transformed Rudy. And he didn't go to New Zealand. He went back to New York. And the first, you know, and truthfully, the day I met Rudy, and this is a true story, the day I met Rudy, you know, I walked into his gallery and like a magnet, I was attracted to him. It was like a magnet. Like, I suddenly found myself standing in front of this man who's telling me about his spiritual practice and his life. He showed me a photograph of himself lying on the floor with a picture of Swami Nichananda superimposed in his heart. It was the first thing he ever showed me, Rudy, a picture of himself lying on the floor at the foot of probably was Muktananda, you know, with a picture of Swami, you know, Nichananda superimposed in his heart. I always wondered what happened to that picture. And I found it again. You know, it was amazing. I had a friend of mine who was also a friend of Rudy's. His name was Bernard Cristo. I doubted Bernard is still alive. He'd be 120 years old now. But he was a you know, wonderful guy, an old hippie guy who ran an antique store. And I used to know him very well. I used to like him a lot. So he calls me up and says, Stuart, he said, Stuart, I... I'm going out of business and I want to sell off all my inventory. Everything is dirt cheap. Maybe you come here and there's some stuff for you here, you know? So I went to Bernard's gallery on Irving Place, you know, and I walked in and I'm talking and I start looking around and he had a big carton full of junk. I mean, really just terrible things. And on top of it, it was that picture that Rudy showed me when I first met him. So I looked at Bernard and I said, Bernard, look, how much do you want for this thing? I'll give you anything that you want for this thing. You know? And he said to me, he said, Stuart, he said, no, I knew that belonged to you. I put it there so you could find it. And it was that picture that Rudy showed me when I first met him. I said, how did you get this? He said, oh, I think Rudy gave this to me years ago. So, you know, Nichananda has been in my life from day one, literally from day one, when I met Rudy. I met the both of them at the same time. And he's been in my prayers and my meditation, every single meditation. One of the first things I do is ask for Baba's help and the blessing, and Rudy's help and the blessing. It's amazing to have teachers of that caliber working for us in the cosmos. And if the need is real and the spiritual need is real, you can go to them. They will help you. They helped me through situations that, you know, God, I can't even talk about. They were so terrible. And I went to them and they set up whole protective shields around me to keep things from happening that would have happened. I've had a lot of teachers like that in my life. Paula Rinpoche was one of them, another one. Very important teacher in my life. Also Ramana Maharshi. Does that you know? Does anyone else have a question? I mean, you you. Have, you're welcome. You have to have a sense of devotion. Not even devotion. It's just sheer gratitude. What made it possible for me to have my life? And then you can never turn your back on made it possible for you to have your life. That's where I do what I do today. There was one student here, that's what I would do. I mean it. I'm not looking for thousands of people. 
I don't think thousands of people can do this work. You know, I think if I can find a couple of people to carry on what I do, my life is a total success. Does anyone else have a question? Everybody, please. Okay, there are no, no more questions. Great question, Bob. Wonderful, thank you. All right, have class tomorrow evening. Uh, Sunday, there's no online class. I'm having a retreat this weekend. Looking forward to all of you that are coming. Those of you that can't make it this time, uh, there'll be another one in October. If you want to come, you're welcome. And get in touch with myself or Jennifer. Anyway, God bless you all. Thank you. And I'm looking forward to seeing everybody uh, tomorrow. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, you are.